Hi. How are you guys? Um, and I'm feeling all emotional this evening. Uh, I was here this morning with my daughter, and my daughter prepared about 90% of the communion that you're going to take tonight. Washed her hands, put her gloves on, talked to her about what it means, why we're doing it. Um, so that should be some super blessed communion elements today. Um, I want to share a scripture with you, Hebrews 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. My favorite part of the whole story of the death of Jesus is when the veil tore. Because for centuries, there was a barrier between us and God. And God made a way to remove that barrier. And for me, like that had such a deep, rich, personal meaning for me, um, feeling like I had been held at arm's length from everybody that had ever professed to love me. And then hearing that the God of the universe, the one who made every hair on my head, made a way to remove every barrier and every obstacle for me to come to him in any state that I'm in was just awe-inspiring to me. And so that is the, it's, it's from that foundation that I want us to go into this worship night. Um, I want you to understand that any, anything that has been put up as a barrier between you and God, like Jesus has removed it already. Maybe it's simply you stepping around it and going to the arms of your father. So what I want to, what tonight is going to look like is we're going to do several songs and throughout the night, we'll have some of our pastors are going to come up and, and share, give you some encouragement, some exhortation, and they're going to give some points of prayer. There's going to be points of prayer for you to pray in your seat. Um, and there's going to be a point of prayer if you want to come up to receive prayer. Okay, so this is just an open time. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. If you want to kneel, if you want to come to the altar, you can come to the altar. And if at any point in the service you want prayer, our prayer team is here in the front. You can come to any one of them and let them know that you would like prayer. Can we do that? Yeah? I, I read this really interesting, uh, I thought it was a pretty cool little poem from a theologian today that I want to read. In this holy week, on this holy night, we come to be present with Jesus in his suffering. With the glory of Palm Sunday behind us and the victory of Easter not yet come, we gather with our breaking and broken hearts. And in this tragic, in this world that is at once beautiful and holy and tragic, we seek to be present with all who suffer. When sorrow threatens to overwhelm, we long for a brave and sacred space, a space where we can listen and sing and pray, a space to sit with our grief and our questions. Let us be that space for each other tonight as we remember the story together. So Jesus, we ask that you would meet us in this place like you've never met us before, that we would be open to all that you wanna do in our lives today. God, as we remember your beautiful, precious sacrifice, Lord, would you help us and change us and turn us more into your image as we seek after you. Lord, have your will, have your way. Would you be glorified today in Jesus' name.
Is the 
attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Some things that stood out to me from this passage is that when God came to this earth in the form of Jesus Christ, he humbled himself that while being 100% God, he came to this earth as a human, 100% God and 100% man. And the scripture says that there was nothing special about his appearance. So just like he humbled himself to come as a human in the first place, he was humble in the appearance that he came in and looked just like anyone else that was here among us. And in that, he was despised and rejected by us. When he should have been the one human to have ever walked this planet to be exalted above us all, He was the one that we were despising and putting to shame and that people were saying to be crucified. Are there people or things in your life that maybe you exalt over Jesus? Finally, Jesus loves us so much that it says that he became familiar with pain and suffering that he shouldn't have ever had to know. Suffering and pain that he took on as the only one who was innocent, as the only one who was sin-free and should have been spared. And it was for that very reason that he had to be the one to take on that punishment of that pain and that suffering so that we, as guilty sinners, could be spared, forgiven, and given peace. I want to encourage you guys to pray and thank him for taking on the suffering that he didn't deserve so that we could have a reconciled relationship with the Father 
be called his children and receive his abundant grace and love when we continue to fall short of his glory. But I also want to invite you guys, if there's anyone here dealing with any kind of suffering, whether it be physical pain or there's something going on in your family or work or whatever it is, and you need his healing touch right now, or you need his perfect peace in the middle of the chaos right now, feel free to come up during this next song and receive prayer, or just where you're at, pray with those around you. the proof 
sacrifice of Jesus approved by God and the sacrifice of Jesus is acknowledged in heaven let's see the scenario 2,000 years ago there is what we call history there will be called wonderful things happen at the cross of Calvary. Matthew chapter 27, beginning verse 45 to 54. 
Now from the sixth hour, there was a darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Yama Sabachani, which means, My God, my God, why you have forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And at one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and he put on the reed and gave him to me to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split and the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection they went into the holy city and appeared to many when the centurion and those who were uh, those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place they were filled with awe and said truly this was the son of God you know brothers and sisters for the first time in Jesus in the gospel would call God not as the Father but only as God because now is our sin better suffering from alienation he feels the deep agony and pain to his soul and crying out Eli Eli Yama Sabachthani my God my God why have you forsaken me Jusko, Jusko, bakit mo pinabayaan? Why Jesus said this word? It was the manis, manis, manifestation of God's hatred sin. In some unexplained way that Jesus experienced in that terrible hour, the suffering He endured was due to us. And it's that suffering we must can be saved from eternal death God has God had to be separate from Jesus because he could not look upon sin especially when it was being cast upon his very own son Jesus cries out and grieved during excruciating time you know what 2,000 years ago on the place of Golgotha called Calvary there was a great exchange took place on the cross. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For He had made to be seen for us, He knew no sin, that we might be there made God by righteousness in Him through Christ Jesus. And this is a great exchange happened. Your sins, my sins, and every sins of the world give it to Jesus and His righteousness give it to us this is the divine great exchange happened 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary Amen that's why Jesus called the great perfect sacrifice for our sin I remember the song He paid the debt he did not owe, I owe the debt. I could not pay, I needed someone to wash my sins away. 
And now I sing a brand new song, amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Truly, Jesus paid it all. Amen. Tell it to your partner, Jesus paid it all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right now, in this room, the Spirit of the Lord is moving. Everyone is a first-timer here. Praise the Lord. Can you raise your hands, please? First time to attend this kind of service. If there's no first-timer, Shall we all stand? Shall we all stand? The Holy Spirit urges me. Rededicate ourselves, our life to Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit told me to dedicate the life of everyone to Jesus. Shall we lift our hands, please? Come on, lift our hands and repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I choose this day to rededicate my life to you. I commit my heart, my mind, my words, my actions, everything I have, and everything that I am to you. I thank you for your saving me and I offer myself now to you as a living sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless.
to your heart, oh, to your God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that so every believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
in Luke 24, verses 1 to 8, it says in the Word of God, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified on the third day and be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Well, the three women were wondering where the body of Jesus was, but God provided an answer for them. The Bible says, when we seek Him, we will find Him if we search for Him with all our hearts. I believe that is in Jeremiah 29, 13. You know, in this life, we wonder a lot. We have a lot of questions. and We cannot find all the answers in life. But, you know, we leave all to God. We leave all to God. Who commands us to trust Him with all our hearts and to lean up in our own understanding. So whatever you are going through, just leave everything to the cross. Leave everything to God. The three women were taken by surprise and frightful. But the dart of fear quickly, the dart of fear quickly went away as they turned to the words of the Lord. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's hang on. And turn daily to the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yes, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is with certainty it happened. It is our great hope and it is the foundation of the whole gospel. If you don't have Christ in your heart, life is absolutely hopeless. The gospel is God's power to save those who believe and we we all should have the burden we should have the overarching desire to win souls for Christ amen we should have all the burden for the insane because they have no they have no assurance we see them every day they have no assurance they are afraid they are afraid of things going around they are afraid to die but you know, they are the heartbeat of God. The heartbeat of God are souls. And this must be our heartbeat as well. Amen? But tonight, let us share our joys. The believer is truly blessed in the assurance that we have, that, that we have, that we are saved. All that we have. Christ died for our sins and in His substitutionary sacrifice redeemed humanity and buried all our sins, the finality of it all. And He rose from the grave. Jesus is alive. Amen? Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. We are forever grateful for the cross. To the believer, how thankful are we tonight? How thankful are you tonight? And the Lord gave me this verse, which is also a song, in Psalm 51, verses 10 to 12. And this is our prayer as believers. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain. To the one living in fear and uncertainty, 
Listen to what Jesus said to Martha in John chapter 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you, do you believe this? Jesus asked. Do you believe this? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you have the hope of resurrection in you? Amen. Just in you. Just in us. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I just want us to pray in general. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise your name and we worship you, Lord, tonight. For how deep is your love for us, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, how great, how immeasurable is your love for us. And we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you because you first love us. Hallelujah. Resurrected Lord in the world, we will all have tribulation. And it's not always easy to be of good cheer. But our hearts can take courage, Lord. As we remember the resurrection, the very present hope, not only have you been raised from the dead, but you are, Lord, even now, Lord, resurrect, resurrecting bodies and hearts. And this is my prayer for each one, each and every one of us. Lord, resurrect our body and our hearts. Revive our hearts, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And one day, Lord, we thank you that all your people will gather together. In that day, Lord, we thank you. All our tears will be wiped away, Lord. I know many of us here, Lord, we lost our loved ones. We thank you, Lord, that one day, Lord, you will just wipe away all our tears. And we thank you that there will be no more cause for mourning. In that day, Lord, we will sing songs of rejoicing, songs of redemption. Until that day comes, Lord, bring us the comfort and hope only you can give. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen and amen. How great the chasm that lay between the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadow of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could find
We read in Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 13 to 20. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread. 
he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Those precious words, in remembrance of me. In all of scripture, the word remember occurs in 161 verses. Believe occurs in 149. Trust in 95. And not to diminish those, but to emphasize the importance that we remember that we remember who God is and all he has done. It's not remembering in a way that we think, oh, I wish it could be that way again. It's remembering his faithfulness, his goodness, to build our faith, to know that what lies ahead is even better, that the best is yet to come. We remember his faithfulness. And we want to remember that Jesus and his disciples were celebrating this night the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Passover, when God had instructed his people to take the blood of a sacrificed lamb and place it over their doorposts, and miraculously death passed by them. And then God delivered them he made a way through the sea on dry land and delivered them from the bondage they had suffered in Egypt. We can see Jesus in that Passover, the perfect Lamb of God, his blood applied, the death, the separation from him passes by us and we are stepping out of darkness into light. We want to remember the elements of Isaiah's prophecy that Pastor Marissa opened with, how Christ took our pain and bore our suffering, how he was wounded for us, how his stripes took the place where we can find healing, how he paid our debt for sin, one, being sinless, the debt he did not owe, and what a price, one we never could have paid, his precious blood. And I want us to take note that while Isaiah's words were spoken about the coming of Messiah 700 years before the day that Christ was born, they're all in past tense. He said it's already been done indicating to us this was God's plan from the beginning of time, that Jesus would come to the earth as a man, that he would live a sinless life, that he would be the perfect lamb who would give his life and shed his blood. And Jesus did not come to do away with the old covenant. He came to fulfill it. And that he did. No longer was there the need for animal sacrifice to merely cover our sin. As we read in Hebrews 9, verse 12, he did not enter by means of blood or goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption we have been made holy through his sacrifice on the cross. And as Jesus served his disciples and initiated the sacrament of communion on this night, he established God's new covenant, God's promise to humanity that it is he who will forgive sin and restore a personal relationship with those who hearts
believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the mediator of that new covenant, and his death on the cross is the basis of its promise. When Jesus spoke his final words on the cross, to tell us die, it is finished. He wasn't done, beloved. He wasn't done. It was shame that was finished. It was death that was finished. It was the devil that was finished that night. And Jesus was just getting started. Hallelujah. Oh, beloved, ha beloved, have you ever wondered why we call this day Good Friday? It's because Sunday's coming. It's good because it wasn't us on that cross. It should have been. And we've come to celebrate and remember all that he has done for us. Whoever is thankful for that, let's just pause for a moment and tell him, thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us your son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, the blood of Jesus Christ not only redeems us, it justifies us. Being justified means more than being forgiven. I can say, I forgive you, but I can't justify you. But God not only forgives our past, he clothes you in his righteousness as though you had never committed a sin. Think about that word justify, just as if you never sinned, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we remember it cost the blood of his son on the cross. And of this we are assured, his love is not based on us. His love is placed on us. The vastness of his love embraces us and envelops us. And we are going to come tonight to celebrate that communion just as Jesus initiated with his disciples. And so before we do, let's bow our hearts in prayer. Lord Jesus, with deeply grateful hearts, we thank you for your sacrifice upon the cross. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your blood has cleansed our sin and made us worthy of forgiveness that you have justified us. And we celebrate you tonight, Lord Jesus, remembering all that you have done for us. May each heart be filled. May each heart be filled with gratitude for your glory, for your glory. May your peace that surpasses understanding with hope and great joy joy that you alone can give be each of our portions this night in Jesus name so I invite you to the table we're going to come Sister Ems is going to help we're going to go row by row feel free to either take communion here at the table or take it back to your seat whichever you're comfortable with so we'll begin at the beginning and as this is happening, I just want to share one more thing with you that the Lord has been talking to me about. When I have company come to our house, I clean our house a little bit extra special because I want to honor them and have it nice for them. And that's how my mom taught me. <laughs> but I imagined if Jesus Christ was coming to my house, I would probably clean a little bit better. <laughs> I would make sure everything was spotless. So if I had initiated communion, I think I would have had us take the blood first, the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us before we take the bread. 
which is his body broken for us into us. So we can all be thankful that he didn't ask me to initiate communion. He did it. And he's saying, you don't have to be clean before you come to me. You don't have to get cleaned up. You don't have to wait. I come the way you are. I love you just as you are. Take me inside. I am knocking at the door. Let me in. And then together, you and I will work on cleaning up. Oh, don't you love that? Has there ever been anything in your life that you thought, I'm sure God forgave me for this and this and this, but maybe not that. That was pretty big. And it's kept you from coming to him. It's kept you from receiving him. Oh, beloved, this night, ask the Lord if there is anything that has kept you from coming boldly to his throne of grace. We've talked about the temple veil being torn, removing all that stands between us. It's significant that it was torn from top to bottom. Those temple curtains were more than 12 feet high. No one could have reached it without a ladder. But God reached down from heaven and tore it from top to bottom. His hand tore it. His hand took away the barriers. Oh, beloved, receive him. Receive his cleansing blood and receive his forgiveness. Your sin is separated as far as the east is from the west. Receive his cleansing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. like prayer for as you partake of communion you can come forward raise your hand we're watching we'll come to you whatever you want but ask the Lord is there anything that separates me from giving myself fully to you and believing that all of my sin is forgiven that I am justified in you holding your communion, I invite you now, take the bread, receive him.
just like 
He told you what was going to happen. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? If you have a kid in, in kids' ministry, you got sent home these resurrection rolls. If you haven't made them yet, you need to do that this weekend. Put a little marshmallow inside and you wrap it up and you bake it. And when it's done, you open it and it's empty. The marshmallow's gone. My daughter lost her mind. But it was such a cool moment for my wife to be able to talk to her about the empty tomb. And thank you, Melissa. That was so cool. I wonder, as we sang this last song and we're closing up here, like, what, what needs to be resurrected in your life? Right? What have you allowed to die? What dreams have you allowed to just lay in the tomb? Like we, 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 we talked about the Good Friday stuff, right? And Pastor Marie said it's good. Like, let's, let's not leave here without understanding that we serve a miracle-working God, that we serve a God who is really good at bringing dead things back to life. What has he let die in your life? Is it your joy? Is it your peace? Has your hope died? Maybe you're losing you're struggling relationally. Maybe marriages are on the fritz or relationships with family members. Let's speak hope to that. Let's speak that resurrection, miracle working power to those areas of our life that need to be brought back under the authority of the blood of Jesus and brought back to life. So Father, we thank you. God, we thank you that when all hope was lost, you had that ace up your sleeve the whole time. God, we thank you that you knew the end before it even came to pass. God, we thank you that when we were lost, when we were broken, when we were without hope, that you always had a plan. We thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied to our lives. We thank you for your sacrifice and your offering all those years ago to bring us back into right relationship with our Father in heaven. Lord, let us walk out of here believing in that resurrection power for every area of our life that we have let the enemy come in and destroy. Would you be with us, God? Help us have a message on our lips as we leave. Father, telling everybody we come in contact with about the empty tomb. Lord, and I pray that you would fill your house on Sunday morning, that your name would be preached, that your word would be lifted high, Lord, that you would be glorified as it is your mission and goal to draw all peoples unto yourself, Father. And continue to use us as your willing vessels to see your work done. We thank you for that, Jesus. We praise you, we glorify you, we worship you, we honor you. And it's in that holy and precious, beautiful, marvelous, magnificent, and all the other descriptive words, you are good. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Thanks, for, thanks for joining us, guys. Sometimes it's just nice to just worship God. Um, we'll be around. Our pastors will be around if you need prayer for anything. Um, otherwise, you are free to go. And we'll see you on Sunday. We're going to be here with burgers even if it's raining. So come early.
Jesus Christ. Lord.